in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you're welcome to another spirit filled message on fifty centric message if you're new to this channel I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit you always thank you for watching be blessed and I would give him assignments scriptures to read give him certain sometimes I would call him you know, or when he calls me, I'll cut when I'm back, maybe from a meeting or sometime. I'm even praying or studying. And here is his call, you know. I just felt this was an honorable gentleman, very respectful as he sounded. And he was surprised because I would call him sometimes for over 30 minutes. Can you imagine? And talk with him, share, get, tell him to get a pen and a paper, make reference to materials to help him. In fact, I remember a few times when I even made transfers to him and I said, gentlemen, go and buy books with this. Make sure you, and he was surprised. Sometimes he would send a text and say, God, what have I done? And I taught him something. I said, my friend, let me tell you something. In as much as I love you, don't you think it will continue this way? Maximize every day and every moment that you will have. Hallelujah. Yes. And one time, the gentleman started calling, calling, ringing. I remember I returned from a meeting. I told him to follow everywhere I am meeting and listen to the messages. It's part of the mentorship system. And one time, I remember I was preaching somewhere. I didn't save his number, but I could see the, the digits. And he kept calling while I was on stage. He clearly was not following the meeting. Calling, calling, and disturbing and writing, have I offended you? What is this now? I thought you were going to help. I said, oh, the seasons. You have, let me tell you one of the ways you know seasons have come to an end. The blessing that maintained it lives. That blessing, the, listen, this is a powerful revelation. The blessing that is in it lives. Not because you are bad, but it is a way of making you know. When a baby is in the womb of his mother, after nine months, the same pregnancy that the woman would dance and be happy about, she becomes dissatisfied. And even the baby lets her know, I'm tired of this place. Correct? The baby now begins to engineer all kinds of skills to force her, to tell her, Madam, you have to get me out of this place. And let me tell you, whether it is by normal delivery or CS, that baby will come out for sure. Now hear me, never try to resurrect what God is the one killing. This is the mistake that many believers make. Can I tell you this? When a tree is dying, you can water it to come back to life. But when it is dead, there is nothing you can do for it to come back to life. Be careful. Lest the people who were in your seasonal relationships keep putting pressure on you. Remember, we're primary school classmates and they keep inconveniencing you, crying for a space in your destiny and you keep feeling guilty. No, you don't have to be evil. That relationship was for a season. Now that the season has ended, you must know when to move forward. Can I tell you this? The Bible teaches us this seasonal relationships in the journey of Abraham please listen carefully the Bible says when Abraham left he went to go and sacrifice Isaac when you read from Genesis 22 he went with his servants they started the journey together but when he got to the base of the mountain he turned to them and said gentlemen you have tried for me from here it is only me and my sacrifice that will go upward did they do wrong they don't have to do wrong He's just saying your season, the validity of your contribution has come to an end. Can I tell you this? 
There are things God will not do with you till you allow relationships that have ended to end indeed. There are certain things God cannot do with you and in your life. Now, let me tell you this. Because of the emotional nature of humans, it is usually very difficult. It's the reason why many young men cannot leave home when they are supposed to leave home. That doesn't mean you stop relating with your parents. But you have come of age. If you don't leave home, you can never be established. Even if it is one room, pack out and go to that one room and start. So that you can have a testimony that you will give your children. That like my father, I also know God is faithful. I started with a recharge card and a mattress. Look what God has done now. Many people cannot experience more of God. Because they hold on to seasons that have come to an end. Is someone learning? Seasonal relationships. In Nigeria, there are songs that came in certain seasons. And everybody sang those songs, including you. Remember how many times you listened to those songs? They look like you will never listen to any song again. But after a while, to your shock, you will even hear the song in your car and flip to the next song. Not because the song is wrong. The anointing that came with it with that season has served its purpose. Every man of God and every champion on earth with respect to destiny our voyage on earth here is a seasonal relationship because one day whether you like it or not like i said yesterday prepared or not your season will come to an end how many of you remember any name called reinhard bonke wave your hands how many of you remember any name called billy graham wave your hands how many of you remember any name called tl osborne wave your hands how many of you remember any name called Sir Isaac Newton? Wave your hands. Question, where are they today? How many of you remember any name in the Bible called Peter, Paul, Silas? You would think that these people, their seasons would not end. Because of the high level impact. If Christ tarries after 100 years, say for instance, he will not wait that long. I assure you, he's coming soon. I can assure you this by the authority of scripture. We are not going to wait that long before he comes. But then, say for instance, the earth remains for the next 150 years. Do you know if we don't give birth to anybody again after 150 years, even the baby today may be gone. The whole earth will be empty because every one season would have come to end. Remember when you farmed last year? You were happy when you saw the maize growing. And the way you pampered the maize, the maize, um, you know, the, the, the stock, it was as if it would live forever. And all that pampering was just for four months. The day you were harvesting it, you did not even pity what you once pampered. You removed the corn and matched everything and that was it. Ready for another planting season. You must understand seasons. The key to maximizing seasons, even seasonal relationships, is to discern and to take advantage of the blessing and the benefit. Listen, look up. Let me teach you something. There are some of you who grew up with aunties and grew up with uncles. Some of you grew up in families that may not have treated you well. Some of you are even working jobs you don't like. And you are wondering why God put you there. Realize that you are there for a season. Instead of complaining, the stopwatch is, is, is counting down. You may be there with your auntie and your uncle, staying with them. They may not have treated you well, but God is using that season to build stamina in you so that you can survive any other thing in the future. 
instead of complaining and getting angry, discern the season. Because one day, what you are running away from today, you will miss it when the season passes. I would always give this example. Have you seen little children who want to be adults by force? You come back and you find them trying to act like mommy. They will carry mommy's cloth and wear and it's flowing as if they are an angel and they are happy. Sometimes they try to do what daddy is doing. And may God not help you that your child finds a car key and goes to open the car. And his leg is struggling to touch everything and he's just doing whatever he can do. Because he thinks the seasons are too slow. He will wake up and find out that he's 50 years old and miss those days and wish he could go back. An example of what I'm talking about is you. Who would believe that you have come this far? I had the privilege to see um, one of my dear people who trained me growing up and my goodness, he was an old man. I saw one of my pictures one time and I couldn't believe it. I said, this is a joke. You mean I've grown like this? Where am I running to? <laughs> but what you do with seasons is what determines whether you will go far or you will remain where you are. Is God teaching someone now? So a quick recap. That there are three levels and three kinds of relationships. Number one is what? General relationships. Your interaction with your environment every day. Number two, seasonal relationships. Number three, the highest level of relationship. And this is the one that lasts throughout the lifetime of your destiny. They are called destiny or covenant relationships. Please write it down. Destiny or covenant relationships. Hmm. What are these relationships? They are relationships that have a role to play in your life all through your lifetime. For as long as you are alive, those relationships should remain. And these are the relationships that you should pay any price under God to maintain because something about the overall picture of your destiny is connected to those relationships. Is God speaking to someone? An example of destiny relationships is your prophetic connection. An example of destiny relationships, your relationship with your parents. An example of destiny relationships, your relationship with your spouse your relationship with your children, and then your relationship with strategic friends, connections, mentors that God brings to your life. Woe betides a man who does not invest in destiny relationships. You may never be able to actualize destiny. I want to say something respectfully speaking. When you see people in old age, isolated, frustrated, with no help whatsoever. Some of them will give excuses like, I didn't have the opportunity to go to school. I'm sorry, but I disagree. It does not take education to invest in relationships. It takes honor, discernment, and humility. How can God give you a gift of 40 years 30 years, 50 years, and there is nobody on earth who found you relevant enough to connect with you for destiny. You must be a dangerous person then. Someone somewhere should like you enough and be willing to say, I believe in you and I see you an advantage to my life. This place is quiet. I'm sure God is speaking to you now. Because some of you are about to destroy destiny relationships. Some of you, that classmate you met is not just a classmate. There is something connected to destiny. For some of you, this ministry that God brought you 
It's not just an option just because you are looking. It is destiny connection. Now, let me show you what happens when we do not discern destiny relationships. Are you ready? Genesis 13. Let's continue from where we left off. We'll start from verse 7. Remember the story. God called Abraham and Lot went with him. God prospered Abraham and God prospered Lot who went with him. But something started happening. Pay attention to my message now. The spirit of God is speaking. There was a strife between the headmen of, of Adam's cattle, of Abraham's cattle, and the headmen of Lot's cattle. Can you imagine? Both the one who carried the promise and the covenant and the one who followed became so blessed. But with every blessing and with every lifting, there are always issues. The Bible says, and the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelt in the land. Next verse. Verse 8 says, and Abraham said to Lot, let there be no strife. Please follow carefully. I pray thee between me and thee. He said, I'm between my herdsmen and thy herdsmen. Why? For we be brethren. Verse 9. He said, it's not the whole land before thee. Separate yourself. Ah. Now there is a problem. You know what Abraham was telling Lot? It seems like now you don't even know why God blessed you. Because you followed me. You partook of the grace upon my life. Now you have increased and you did not mentor and train your people to know why God blessed them. That it was a destiny connection that brought the blessing. Let there be no strife. Go. He said, separate yourself. You never allow this to happen over destiny relationships. This may happen for general relationships. This may happen for seasonal relationships. But when it has to do with destiny relationships, swallow your pride. Because we are about to learn a lesson from Lot now. Are you ready? Please give it to us. Separate yourself, Abraham told Lot. I pray thee from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, I will go to the right. Or if thou wilt depart to the right, I will take the left. Abraham was telling him, it does not matter the location. What is on me will sort me out. But you choose any direction and go. Now watch the foolishness of Lot. Which is the foolishness of many people on earth today. God has brought you to this camp to give you wisdom for destiny. The Bible says, And Lot lifted his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan that it was well watered where before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Even as the garden of the Lord, like the garden of Eden, as thou comest unto Zohar. Hey. Then, Lord shows him all the plain of Jordan and Lord journeyed east and they separated themselves one from the other. Now follow carefully. Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan. Where did Lord go to help me? Lord dwelt in the city of the plain and pitched his tent towards Sodom. This is what separation from destiny relationships can bring. The first decision that Lot will be taking outside of that relationship landed him in Sodom. Can I tell you this? There are relationships God brought you to because he knows that if you take certain decisions without those relationships, what happened to your father will still happen to you. God brought you to certain relationships as a covenant binding so that you can be a partaker of certain blessings that are on men. This is true. Lot went unfortunately to Sodom. Question. By the time Abraham came to rescue Lot, where did he find Lot? He did not find him at the gate of Sodom. 
Lot had moved in, moved in, and he was at the center of Sodom. Even though he remained a righteous man, but there was still trouble. Because if you are righteous and your environment is polluted, you will still suffer it. Is someone learning? God connected you to a friend. That friend was the one who helps you pray. That friend was the one who helps you fast. Every time you are backsliding, God will show that friend in a dream. And you say, my brother, I had this dream. I just noticed that. Is, is there something wrong with your spiritual life? Let me tell you what Satan does to people when he wants to destroy them. Please look up and learn. The first thing Satan does when he wants to attack your destiny is to look for everybody who can help you when you are down. He will create trouble between you and them so that all of them will leave you. When you are alone in pride, he will now attack you because anybody who can help you, there is no peace between you for the rescue. This is how people die and this is how people are destroyed. Satan will never attack you when he knows you are surrounded by destiny relationships. The first thing he will do is to surround you with wrong people or take away good people from your life. Lot would have said, Abraham, I know there is strife between my people and your people. Please let me talk to them. I can't let you go because I remember what I was and where I was before God brought me to you. I believe it's a destiny connection. My apologies. Let me work on it. Only God knows what else would have learned about Lot. Destiny relationships. There are doors today that have been opened in my life, to my life as a person and in ministry because of destiny, strategic destiny relationships. And by the privilege of God's grace, God has used me through destiny connections to also open doors for others. Many of you here respectfully are about to get crash your life because you don't have value for anybody. You have a narrative in your life. I don't need anybody. To hell with you, you can go. Be careful who you are driving away from your life. You may drive one man that is equal to the next 10 years of your peace. Go and find out what happened to the disciples when they ran away from Jesus. Jesus is not the kind of person you run away from. But they ran away. And within 72 hours, their whole life scattered. Peter that was gaining relevance. In 72 hours, Peter went back to fishing and was wasting his time there. When Jesus came in John 21, he said, little children, have you any catch? He didn't even know it was Jesus. He said, cast your net to the right side. When he casted his net, as soon as Jesus returned to his life, in one statement, he caught fish that he had been struggling and he did not catch. Is someone learning? Before I continue, please lay your hand on your head and say, Lord, give me the discernment to know the relationships that my destiny depend on. Lay your hands on your head and pray. Grant me that grace so that I don't use foolishness or pride or lack of discernment and destroy valuable relationships that can hold the key to many, 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 many chapters of my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, very quickly, I'll read a scripture and I will show you how to maintain destiny relationships and we'll be done. Genesis 
21. For someone, when your life changes and people ask you, you will tell them, I came for this student congress and I found something. I found a key. Hallelujah. Now, for sake of time, I will save you a lot of details. Genesis 21. Let's start from verse 8. This was a story between Abraham and his wife Sarah and a maid called Hagar, the mother of Ishmael. Please follow very carefully. Let's start from verse 8. Now, speaking about, remember when Sarah could not bear a child. Are we together now? Abraham now had a child with Hagar and the Bible says something. That Hagar was Sarah's maid. But the moment she had a child and she saw that she was now in a position of advantage, something began to happen. She started mocking and acting funny towards Sarah. And in anger, Sarah banished her and said, go. Abraham said, you can do with her whatever you want. So this is a story you are about to learn. Verse 8, very quickly. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. Uh -huh. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian. Now God had given her her own, which was born unto Abraham. He said, wherefore, she said unto Abraham, verse 10, cast out this born woman and her son, for the son of the born woman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. Verse 11, and the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. Now watch this. And God said to Abraham, let not it be grievous in your sight because of the lad and because of the born woman. In all that Sarah had said unto thee, hearken to her voice, for Isaac shall be thy seed, shall thy seed be called. For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. He says, and also... The son of the born woman, I will make a nation because he is thy seed. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, watch this now, and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child, uh -huh, and sent her away. And she departed and did what? Wandered in the wilderness. She came to that house as a maid. By reason of all that happened, regardless what happened, God lifted her and sorted her. Now she separated and wandered around the wilderness, even to Beersheba. Next verse. The Bible says, And when the water was spent in the bottle, and she cast the child, under one of the shrubs. Uh -huh. And she went and sat her down over against him a good way off. As it were a bow shot for she said, let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lift up her voice and wept. Now the lesson begins. And God heard the voice of the lad and the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad where he is. Now watch this. He said, Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him in thy hand, for I will make him a great nation. Verse 19. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad drink. Next verse. And the Bible says, and God was with the lad and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and he became an archer. And he dwelt in all of that and all of that. Now, when you read that scripture, let me tell you what I'm trying to pull out. The Bible said something very instructive that both Hagar and the baby Two of them were crying. But the Bible says when God heard, he had only the voice of the baby. The Bible never said he had the voice of Sarah, of um, Hagar. How come she was crying and the baby was crying? 
And only the voice of one child went to heaven. You know why? Because even though she was in rebellion, she had left her maid. That baby that came out of her was still connected to that blessing by covenant. And because of that covenant, God could not deny the child, even though the mother of the child was in rebellion. He cried, she cried. God only had the voice of one child. Notice, God did not even say anything to solve her problem. Why are you crying? Hold the child. I want to speak about the child. And that's it. How can I be crying? And a baby is crying. And God hears the, the cry of the child. And comes and acts as if I am not there. Gave her water. And now focus on speaking about the child. Because he was connected to Abraham. This is very powerful. Write this down, please. How to build lasting destiny relationships. I'll only give you two keys. How do I build lasting destiny relationships? Number one, I wrote here, usually God uses the various phases and stages of your life. He uses geographic locations. He uses church and other occasions to connect you to these relationships. That means destiny relationships happen in our lives primarily by taking advantage of the phases and the stages in your life. For instance, school now. Within that three, four, five, six per year period of school, there are certain people that God will bring in your life and among them there will be destiny relationships. God can also use your geographic location where you are domiciled. God can use your church. Like many of you now, there was no other way you would have met and known yourselves but for this platform. God can also use other occasions and connect you to these relationships. Now, let me tell you this. When you want to build destiny relationships, I wrote here, you must be driven, you must all be driven by similar foundational values about God and about life. It's impossible to build strategic destiny relationships until you are driven by similar values about God and about life. The Bible says in Amos chapter 3 and verse 3, can two walk together except they be agreed. The word agreed there means compatible, similar in the foundational understandings that they have. You cannot join yourself to people who do not have, you don't agree as far as foundational values are concerned. You may differ in other areas, but not about God and not about life. Is someone learning? That means before you know who is what being a destiny connection to you, you must have values that govern your life. Values about God. When people are lawless and they don't live by values, they don't even know who is what their life or who is not what it. You will open up your heart. The Bible says a man who does not have control over his spirit is like a city that is without walls. A city without walls is one that is open for anyone. Arm robbers, animals, whatever. They just flood into your life. Let me wrap up this teaching quickly by giving you six keys to help you maintain. There's a difference between building and maintaining. For building destiny relationships... You must have foundational values and ensure that those who come into your life have consistent or similar values as touching the things of God and touching the matters of life and destiny. And then I told you that God uses the various faces and stages of our lives alongside our geographic location and any other occasion to bring these people to our lives. 
But now the most important lesson I want you to get in this session is how to maintain destiny relationships. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.